The Seahawks were linked to Baker Mayfield not long before the Panthers traded for him, and that may have been one of the things that actually got the Panthers to get the deal done, the possibility that the Seahawks would enter the conversation. The Seahawks have been linked to Jimmy Garoppolo as well. For now, it's Geno Smith, Drew Locke. Geno Smith, as of Friday, according to Pete Carroll, right. continued to be in the lead as the number one option for the Seahawks. They had a mock game on Saturday. Some reports have suggested that Drew Locke had the better of the showing in that. Yep. Here's Pete Carroll talking about the performance of his top two quarterbacks in the mock game that was played over the weekend. What do you think of Drew Locke and Gino? Uh, they looked like they threw the ball pretty good, you know, and, and uh, uh, it, it, the way it worked out, Drew got some more opportunities, uh, but I thought they threw the ball real nice in, in the control stuff uh, underneath and we're clean with the ball coming out. Protection was good early, um, so uh, it, it'll give us a good chance to, to see him. If you notice, they worked with the, with the first O-line. Both guys got work with the first O-line today and, uh, and the first receiver, so it was, it, it'll be a nice, uh, nice chance to compare these guys. You know, he, he is not going to let on one way or the other what he's thinking about doing. He'd like to keep the Broncos in the dark as long as possible. There are the basic numbers for Locke and Smith from the mock game. 19 for 26 for Locke, 11 for 20 for Smith. The offense just did more with Locke, according to Greg Bell of the Tacoma News Tribune. And, and the door's been open for Locke to jump Smith. It's been open. And both guys saying great things about how they're going to support each other. Locke went through this last year with Teddy Bridgewater, competed right up until the end, and lost it. Smith hasn't been in the mix to be a starter for years. So I, I still don't know who it's going to be. But if this weekend means anything, it sounds like maybe Locke is starting to gain some ground. And I'll have a chance to to take the lead in the preseason. Preseason is going to be critical. You know, for a lot of these teams – Preseason isn't going to mean all that much other than figuring out the last five spots on the roster. That's right. For Seattle, it's going to mean everything. Yeah, and then Carolina and Seattle. I think there's two teams where you yeah. know there, there's real there's real tangible like you know ground to be covered here in the preseason. Uh, a little bit like the situation we talked about, where you know Drew Locke at least has been there a little longer, but I would think he were getting towards the time here, you know, that he's probably getting closer. To Geno Smith, I know last week Pete Carroll even brought that up, that, you know, hey, Drew at the line of scrimmage is not quite on top of things right like Geno Smith is yet. And that's that's to be, you know, that, that's natural. That's normal. Uh, Geno's got, you know, a full year, more than a full year in this system where Drew Locke, is, he's playing catch-up. But, I, again, I would think this is the time where it's starting to click. Drew Locke, as we've discussed before, has a ton of talent. Geno Smith's got talent, too. I mean, Gino, if you see him in person, he's a big guy and he can really throw it. And we saw what he did last year with the chances he was given, and he can move around the pocket too. And he understands, the, I think, the kind of style of football Pete Carroll wants to play and taking care of the football, run the ball and do that. Drew Locke has not proven that. And then when Pete makes comments like Drew got more opportunities, I think he's – Subtle, 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 excuse me. Subtle, subtly, subtly, subtly. <laughs> damn B is silent. Uh, that he's subtly, he's subtly letting you know that he got more opportunities. He was, he was letting you know that for a reason, in my opinion, you know, because maybe there were some things that, you know, didn't go in Gino's favor or whatever else, you know, Hey, maybe a guy ran a wrong route. Maybe, you know, their, their offense was working on something a little different when he's getting there. That's what stinks sometimes about that. You know, there's a few things that happen during a scrimmage like that all the time where it is, Oh man, that quarterback, he got to come in towards the end of the scrimmage. They lost its intensity a little bit. You know, my offensive coordinator figured out at the end of the scrimmage kind of how the defense was playing us through the day. He started to call some better plays and all that. So you don't know. But, again, I think it's very equal, and I do think this is one that's going to play out right in front of us on the football field. Do you think they're biding their time to snatch Garoppolo once he's released by the 49ers? And once he's released, he's free and clear, yeah. immediate free agent, can sign with any team. Do you think that they're planning to do that? I, I, I don't get that feeling. I can't say that I've heard anybody like in football that I know like really go down that conversation yet. I know it's been out there. Um, but but yeah, I don't I don't know if I buy that. And I mean, you know, I also think of like Seattle. Seattle's had Jimmy Garoppolo's number and Shanahan's number for that stand standpoint. They might look at it and go, eh. And and the other thing too, Mike, where we we discuss this a lot, like Jimmy will get there. 
and be the third most physically talented guy on the team. He's not, he's not more talented than Drew Locke or Geno Smith. Geno Smith and Drew Locke are going to be bigger human beings that are faster, and they're going to be able to make more aggressive, explosive plays down the field. That's where I get into this conversation a lot. I'm not sure what I know what Jimmy G really is. He's had a lot of silver platter completions and plays delivered to him. He's good. I get it. But I don't know if he's really any you – know, he, he, to me, is he, I don't think he is anything better than top 18 in football. I don't really look at him that way. And I, I think that could be another issue there, too. You get Jimmy Garoppolo, they bring him in, they go, wait, the, what? He's not even on the same level throwing the post route as Geno or Drew Locke. Whoa, here's a 25-yard comeback. Geno and Drew Locke are throwing lasers and the ball spinning hard. Jimmy Garoppolo, I mean, they can't even get him to throw the ball out there in San Francisco and do that. So that's where I would think it could be a little dicey too, Mike. Maybe I'm crazy to think that, but, but that's, that's at least my opinion on that one. I continue to think that Pete Carroll is trying to will this thing in the direction of Geno Smith. That it he seems wants to like show it. that he can Agreed. win with Russell Wilson's backup. And that if it's close... Or, or even if Drew Locke is just a little bit ahead, I think Geno's the guy. I for feel week the same one. way, Mike. Locke's going to have to blow it away, I think, to be the week one starter. Uh, agreed. It just, you know, again, I'm with you. Pasta, meatballs, steak, and, you know, mashed potatoes. I, I, the, just the way Pete talks, and again, even that comment I brought up there, it does make me believe he's leaning Geno as of right now. And, and I would think that the carelessness of Drew Locke with the football has to scare him a little bit, too. I do. I mean, again, that's what we've talked about the last two years when Drew's got his chance is just can you trust him? And we know that's a big thing up there with Pete Carroll and the way he wants to play football. So uh, I'm, I'm with you there. I think Gino is in the leader house. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.